Hey everybody, Maria Marquis from Coda here. And in this video series, we're taking a look at the patterns that you can reuse and remix dock after dock after dock. So the pattern we're talking about today is a pulse check. So let's take a look. How we get to this is we type slash and pulse check. This is gonna give you all the things that Coda has pre-made ready for you to start tweaking and adjusting. So we'll do the remote pulse check right here. And let's see what's going on here. We've got a little area we can put a title. We can go ahead and just remove that for now. And how this works is we have a button that just adds to this table below, and we're using this icon scale column type to show a quick hit of kind of how people are feeling. The other thing that we have here is we've got the ability to filter this table. So if I uncheck this box, it'll show me just my responses. Whereas if I check the box, it's showing me everybody's responses. And that's just a, a very simple filter we have set up here. If we take a look at filter, it says, hey, show it if uh, we've got things that are submitted by the user that's currently locked in. But you could also just remove this and it'll show everything. So that's the basics. I add my pulse check. I say, I feel awesome. I feel awesome, yeah, and it shows my name. And notice if I uncheck, it just shows me my responses, or if I check, it shows me everybody's. So that's the pulse tech, a button that adds, a button that filters, and then this icon scale to show very quickly how we feel about something. So let's see how we can remix and reuse this for a couple different people and situations. Let's start with a personal example. So the personal example here, I like to use this instead of it being like a pulse check for a team, having it be a pulse check for a group of friends. You know, maybe it's all of your friends that um, you grew up with, but you've all gone and lived separate lives. You live in separate cities, separate countries, and you want to be able to stay connected. So what you could do is you could go ahead and add a couple columns here to make this kind of fit the bill a little bit more. So we've changed the name of this column to be friend. We have the reflection that's staying the same. We're keeping the icon scale being little happy faces, but I've also added two more columns where people can add a song that they're listening to using the Spotify pack and whatever they're watching uh, using the Wikipedia pack. So it looks like Al is watching Planet Earth. How exciting, I can read all about it here. He's also listening to Adagio in D minor. I can go ahead and see everything about that here. And I can even go and jump right over to it. So I did that just by clicking on that little plus sign to add a column. And then instead of adding just a regular column type, I chose one of the packs and added those. And then I just pop a link in and I'm ready to go. So in this case, the only thing I did to change this was decided what else am I curious about learning from the people that I'm checking in with. But everything else is exactly the same. The button that adds your reflection and uh, the little icon scale. And in this case, I removed the filter since we don't wanna worry about bias interrupting decisions if it's just friends checking in. All right, so now let's take a look at the next example, freelancers. So here for the freelancer, one of the things that happens when you work by yourself is sometimes it can be hard to keep yourself accountable to habits or kind of your different flow. So I've made this being a pulse check that's really just for you as a solopreneur. So in this case, I changed the name of the button to be, did I do it? And I did that just by right clicking on the button, changing the label, and then I made a little green and did the little happy face just by making some changes. But it still adds the rows to this table. And then what I did is instead of having it be that smiley face pulse check, I changed the icon to be something I felt was a little bit more appropriate, which in this case was choosing this little bar, but I could choose martini glasses if I'm that kind of freelancer, I don't know. Coffee cups, fire, bugs, diamonds, bells. Notice we can have all kinds of different examples here. But in this case, I wanted to do kind of how do I feel I did based on my overall productivity. And then I just named the column instead of reflection, how did I do? And I could put some quick reflections in here. The other thing I decided to do was I decided to create a view that was a chart of that table. And I did that just by typing slash and chart and I chose line chart, and then I just decided to pull from my uh, sentiment tracker. So I did that previously. And so I can see like overall, how am I tracking over time? So I can start to see maybe on Mondays, I'm really productive, maybe on Fridays, I'm not, and just sort of learn from my habits, creating this little habit tracker here. All right, so the next one is our product manager example. And this one, I would say, this is really what this team sentiment tracker was designed for initially. How do we help project teams really be able to quickly understand how's everybody doing, who needs support, where are we struggling? 
So we already have the filter that shows me everyone's pulse check by the check or uncheck, right? Let's me see only mine or everybody's. But I added this other filter that allows me to filter by date. So I added this column for the date column. And now I could see, let's just see the uh, this week check-ins, or let's see all the check-ins that have happened, or let's see uh, the last seven days and the next seven days. So this allows us to keep that pulse check nice and fresh. So we can have the full information, but we're not seeing every pulse check every day. We're just seeing what we need for this particular moment. So that's a really helpful thing to add. You just type a slash, date, you can choose date range, and then you go ahead and just have this filter off of here. And you can even do that really easily by just adding a filter directly from here using that interactive one. All right, let's take a look at the small business example. So here what I've done is I've used this to be more of an employee survey. So what I've done is I've just created multiple columns where we've got the different icon scales. So I changed the icon scale in this case to be that little thumbs up just by clicking on here. I did the same thing for smiley faces, same thing here, and I still have the open reflection. Now, one thing I did here is I removed the list of who. So the removing the user in this case. That allows me to preserve some anonymity here. So folks can just click on add your reflection, it'll add a row, and they can go ahead and make whatever updates they like. And if you want, you can always right click on your button and you can choose open row for editing as an option. I think this is great because when you click on it, it opens it up in a bit of a form view. And here we could go ahead and mark whatever we wanted. I am doing well, <laughs> whatever we like. We start to build that up. So the last example is our consulting example. And here what we've got is we can do a pulse check that's based on clients. So I've kept everything the same here just by renaming this button to add your pulse check. And then I've added a column to be for the client. So I did that by clicking plus and creating place for client. Now notice this has this little um, around uh, treatment that lets me know that it's looking up and it's looking up to this client list. So here we could, you know, add the, uh, revenue down here. So this is 5,000, this is 10,000, this is 5,000. And we could change this instead of a number. We could have this be a currency. There we go. So now if we hover over any of these, we can see the revenue as well. So I did that just by creating a lookup column which you just get to right from here at the top. You go to your options and you'll just choose lookup from here and you can always just type, go ahead and do that and be able to create a separate table. So I added a little extra contextual information because depending on my client, I might have very different reflections, right? If I've got a pulse check in this case and maybe I'm also working on Weispiel and be like, I feel great. And maybe this one's a five, just like that. You could go ahead and see it around uh, all those different uh, different dimensions. And you could even decide to group things by client as well, just by clicking the top, choosing group and group along the left. And you could see all of the different summaries based on client. So just a way to add another dimension to your pulse check. So with that, go ahead, add some pulse checks to your own docs. See how you like it, add some different elements. Remember, it's all about that icon scale to give you a quick look about what's going on. All right, I'll see you next time.